Welcome to our little shop. Today we have a precision base in the shop. The customer brought in that he had had to a area fender dealer for service. And I was told that he leveled the frets, set it up, and shimmed the neck. But the reason it's here is the guy wanted to know if I could lower the action anymore and it has a buzz on the open A string. He actually has a band up here to try to keep that down. So I talked to him briefly when he brought it in. We discussed the situation. I kind of looked it over quickly and saw that it had some fret problems. Um, if this base was fret dressed, someone did a very poor job. There is some very high frets here that a blind man could find. Anyway, I'm looking around some more here, getting ready to start on this, and I thought, you know, this is a good one for a video. Because I'm going to find lots of stuff here. I'm very curious as to how he shimmed the neck. Because, back here on this Babbix Bridge, He's got all the bridge saddles as low as they would go. In fact, I noticed that the height adjustment for the G-string, the Allen screw is actually missing, where it's been loosened up so much it's probably vibrated and fell out. I also got a peek at the truss rod nut in here. Not happy about that. You can uh, see here where it's scuffed up around the pick guard where someone's tried to force the wrench in there to straighten the neck. So the first thing I'm going to do with this, I've looked it over here a little bit, I'm going to look it over a little bit more, and I'm going to pull this neck and put it on my surrogate body do a fret dress on it. So let me look a little deeper here and I'll get back to you. Alright, well, we've got a few things apart here. Let me catch you up on what I've found out here. First of all, like I say, the bridge saddles were too low. They're all the way down. We still had an action of 6 64ths at the 12th fret on the treble side on the G string and 9 64ths high on the low E at the 12th fret. That is about Oh, let's see. 30 seconds of an inch maybe higher than uh, Fender factory recommended settings. The neck was also way too straight. He had five thousandths relief in it. And the nut was too high. So no one's cut the nut. Also, to show you, these are the high spots I found in the frets. Some of these are really bad. And we've got a little kick up back here at the end. Now, getting to the shim thing. We've done the old plastic shim in the neck pocket. And if he's trying to lower the action, he shimmed it at the wrong end. Because this would raise it. Now, here's something that really gets me. I mentioned the truss rod nut. This thing is chewed up. Actually, it doesn't look so bad through the camera. But it's pretty roughed up. I never did care for this type of thing. And that's what's been used on it. They've come in at an angle through the pit guard here. 
and this rounded ball socket is what was contacting the nut for the truss rod. And it's rounded out the end of it. And we've not got much room to get a hold of it. So we're going to check that out. I've also come to the conclusion I'm not going to be able to put this on my neck jig because we've got a different bolt mounting. My neck jig body is set to match vintage fender necks. So I may end up actually popping the pick guard off this to work on it. We'll see. I may actually have to jig up this original body. But I definitely have to neck jig it to do a decent fret dress on it. So okay, there we go. You're caught up to this point. I'll be back. As you can see, we've made it to the neck jig. I've opted to uh, use the original body here and I've just disconnected the pickup from the volume pot and a ground lead from the back of the pot and we'll resolder those later. This gives me full access to the truss rod here without any problem, which I cleaned up that nut a little bit and lubed it. There's only about maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch grip range on that nut to start with. So I made sure I had a very clean wrench to use and it's working. So we're going to leave that alone. In a perfect world, uh, we could replace the truss rod nut, but it's really not necessary at this point. As long as care is utilized. Especially after it leaves this shop. Anyway, we've marked the frets back out again. I did a rough leveling on those before I put on the jig uh, to get a better reading of the neck. It seems we have a hump right through here that we need to deal with. I have my various straight edges here in my file. We're ready to start making some file dust. Then we'll start sanding. Then we'll sand some more. <laughs> okay, time to start getting to work on these frets. So far, we have about an hour and a half in. We have the frets leveled and the top sanded. I've actually already finished the first one. 19 more to go. So in a little bit over an hour, I should have uh, all these frets dressed. Got to shape them and polish them and all that. So it's going to take almost five minutes per fret. So I'm going to get a drink. Get my finger protectors on. I've got my marker, my fret file, my little sanding blocks. My sandpaper, my scotch bright. We're ready to rock and roll here. So let's whip this little thing out. Well, that took about another hour and a half. But what we have are completely leveled frets and dressed properly. Fingerboard's been all cleaned up. I've cleaned up my mess here. Yeah. Oh, my dust is gone. <laughs> anyway, this is all done. So let's get this off this neck jig, get it back over on the bench, get the electronics wired back up in it, get the pick guard back on, continue with the setup. So we have the pick guard back on and the guitar wired back up. I've added a shim here the way I do it at the back of the cavity for the neck. That should allow us for some bridge adjustment. I'm probably also going to have put a lateral shim up here on the base side of the neck. Uh, it seems like it wants to shift around the pocket a little bit. So we're going to have to see what can do there. So let's get this neck on it and carry on. Here we are. We've got the neck 
shimmed and aligned. Yes, the strings are straighter on the neck now than they were. They won't shift around. We have our nut cut. We've got the intonation all set. Uh, I have to make a run to the hardware store here and see if I can find an Allen screw to fit his bridge that's missing. I borrowed one from the D string saddle to set up the G string, then I put it back in the D to finish up. So I gotta go find him a bolt for this. End up recutting the nut up here. The A string, for some reason, was three times as high as it should have been. It was barely sitting in a nut. And yes, I measure the height from the first fret. I'll also check to make sure it plays in tune. We've tightened up these tuning keys, you know, did all the same stuff I usually do. At this point, this bass is finished. I just need to go find this bolt and get it in it and get the G string height set, and he's good to go. Time so far? Roughly four hours. My late evening hardware run was a success. I managed to find an 832 thread 5 16 inch long set screw that worked back here for the bridge. It was about a sixteenth of an inch shorter than uh, the others, but that's as good as we could do, and it worked. So we're going to walk away from that and be thankful we found one. So I checked the base all back over again this morning, made sure his neck relief was still all right. Checked it all back over. Uh, we'll let it settle a few days, check it some more. Uh, check it every day before it goes out the door. So we plan on this base leaving Saturday. And it is Tuesday morning. Early. Cold. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like 20 degrees out there this morning. Anyway, there you go. Another base. Correcting someone uh, else's setup and fret work. So, until next time, play nice. I'll see you later.